Hi everyone, I'm Nityanandam, Technical Support Engineer in Informatica. In this video, we are going to see how to use decision step in Taskflow. The agenda of this video is to know about what is Taskflow and decision step in Taskflow and how to use it. What is Taskflow? Taskflow defines an order of execution of the data tasks. You can create task flows by dragging and dropping tasks onto a canvas. Task flows are useful as they reduce the complexity in larger data integration tasks by breaking them into smaller and manageable mapping tasks. What is decision step in task flow? The decision step in task flow allows us to define a condition based on which we can define the flow of execution of the data tasks. Let's go to the demo. I have a mapping which reads a product related data from an Oracle table and writes to a CSV file. Also, it stores the maximum value of solve count column in max count in node parameter. We have a mapping task for this mapping. Here, our task is to execute this mapping task until the value of max count in node parameter is greater than or equal to 60. For achieving this, we have a task flow. In this task flow, I added one data task and selected the mapping task in this data task. For checking the max count in node parameter value, I added one decision task. In this decision step, I selected the max count parameter from the data task. And here I define the condition which is greater than or equal to 60, which means if the value of max count parameter is greater than or equal to 60, then the task flow will choose the path one, which is nothing but the above one. And it will end the task. If the value of max count parameter is less than 60, then it will choose the otherwise path. In the otherwise path, I added one jump step. This jump step redirects the flow back to the data task. So the data task will execute it again. Okay, let's go back to the database. So in this database, we have a table called product underscore solve. This is our source table in the mapping. Currently, we have four rows of data in the table. And we can see that in the solve count column, we don't have any values that is greater than or equal to 60. So that means if we execute this task flow, this task flow will continuously trigger this mapping task until any of the value becomes 60 or any new values are added to this solve count as greater than or equal to 60. Let's run this task flow. We can see the task flow is triggered. Let's go to view sub task. Here we can see that the mapping task is triggered and it read four rows. And it's again triggered. This is triggered again because we can see the value of max count here, which is 55, which is nothing but the maximum value in the available values. We 
we can see these tasks are continuously triggered as there is no value which is greater than or equal to 60. So we can go back to the database and add one more row which has the value of solve count as 60 and I'm committing. Now we can see we have a one more row which has a solve count value of 60. Now let's go back to the SCS UI. Here we can see this time it read five rows. Also we can see there is no more trust set triggered. If we come back to this previous step, here we can see the task flow is executed successfully. In this decision step, we can have an option to add more parts as well. We can add more parts. Also, we have some other conditions as well, like equals, not equal to, less than, less than or equal to, etc. And we can add some more subtasks here, or subtask flows here. We can add other tasks as well. That's it for this demo. Let's go back to the presentation. In this video, we learned how to use decision tip in TaskFlow. We would love to hear from you. You can reach out to us at supportvideos at informatica.com if you have any queries. Also, you can reach out to us in Twitter. Thank you.